In this lesson, we will add a 360 photo to our scene. So we'll be using that instead of a plain color. And we are also going to learn how to create a reticle, which is like a mouse cursor in virtual reality. It's like a pointer um, and how to do some very, very simple things when we um, when we click on some object or when we look at some object in our scene. So let's get started and let's start by talking about 360 photos. So when I first heard about 360 degree photos um, a while back, I didn't know how they were stored. Like I thought there was a different file format for those photos. But um, so how can we store something that is a sphere as a normal image? But if you think about it, we are all familiar with the world map, of course. And the world map is a rectangular representation of something that is a, a sphere or approximately a sphere. So the way to bring um, a sphere into a rectangle, is, one way of doing it is what it's called the equirectangular projection. And uh, for us to use uh, 360 photos in A-frame, we need um, a 360 photo that has a rectang equirectangular projection. And it turns out that most photos you can take with uh, 360 cameras have that option. And um, so I've taken a photo with my, in this case, with the Samsung camera app. And uh, this is a photo that I took just um, near my, my house. And um, it has the same projection that the world map has. And basically the the ratio between the width and the height is two. So if the if the width is two, then the height is one. Uh, so this is the image that we will be using here. Okay, so we've got that image already, and that is present in um, in my in my folder in my images folder. So what I will do now is import that image into my into my project. So I've created a new project here. This is folder number five. And I already set up the basic scene and I opened up the assets tag so that we don't have to type that again. Um, so I'm going to go and I'm going to load my 360 photo. So the name of that file was a little bit long. So I'm going to copy the name of the file and just uh, paste it here. Um, so we're going to give this an ID of, um, of 360 photo like so. And close this tag. So in our scene, we will be using the same element that we used to create the, the plain color sky, but instead of using a color, we're going to use source and we're going to set the ID of our photo. So that's 360 photo. And we need to make sure that we close the tag. So that should be enough. Let's go and see if that works. Let's go to, um, to the browser here and um, I need to make sure to, to load this uh, for project five. Yep, it's all good. So I'm going to press enter and here we go. So we got the 360 photo in, I don't know, two lines of code or not even that. So this is an extremely simple way to bring in a 360 photo. It's almost too simple to be true. Um, so we got the photo now and there are some imperfections in this photo. It's not a professionally taken photo, but it will do the job for us. Um, so that is how we can bring in a photo. So now that we have the 360 photos, we'll do the other part of this lesson, which I mentioned before, which is adding this reticle. So by that, if, if we go to the inspector, you will see that the, um, by default, we have this camera object. We never really created a camera. We never really gave this camera a position or a rotation. And we can even see the position that has the height of 1.6, which is the number I mentioned uh, when we said that the player by default was at 1.6. It has a certain rotation now because I have been moving around. I have been looking around. Um, but this here has a camera component. So that is something that we should be interested in. It also has a looks control, and that is what allows us to drag that around. And then there's also these other components that uh, is so that you can move in the scene using the, the, the arrow keys in your keyboard. Um, so that is added by default as well. Although in my opinion, in virtual reality experiences, that is not um, as helpful um, because it's more like for the computer. But if you are say on, a, on your uh, headset, uh, you're not gonna have those keys. So uh, don't. I, I find that this could be more useful for um, 
for when you are developing, if you want to be able to move around, or maybe if you are building a VR experience, uh, that is just some, uh, something that you can have as well. But in a 360 photo environment, because you can't really move, the photo is just taken in one position, this would definitely not have any use. But what I wanted to show you is that there is a camera by default when you don't add a camera. But when you add a camera, you can have more control as to what will happen in your scene. So let's go and do that. Let's go and add our own camera. Um, so in our scene, um, this time we will be adding uh, an entity and this entity will have uh, this uh, camera attribute as camera component. So we're going to give it the camera component. And it's also going to have this look controls component, which is the, what we, when we use to drag with the mouse to look around. So if we just add that, um, we should end up with uh, pretty much the same that we had before, because there's not really any change. These things are added by default. So let's go back to our project here. Let's um, reload this page. So we had we have what we had before, but now we have been explicit about it. Um, so um, what else I can do here? I can um, and in fact, if we go here and select the camera now, you will see that the position is now zero because we didn't uh, we are uh, we didn't set the position, and since we are setting the camera now, we are in control of the position of the camera, and also we no longer had that uh, have that added uh, element. So we just have the very basics, the very default values. Um, I will give the, the that height to my camera. So position equals zero and 1.6 and zero, just so that we can have um, elements that are say underneath of us or above us. But since we are on a 360 photo, it doesn't matter because the photo is always the same. Um, so that is for the camera. Now, why is it that we added the camera? it is so that we can add things inside of the camera. And whatever you add inside of the camera follows the camera around because it's a child object. And what we want to have here is um, a cursor. So it is a cursor. And that is what's used for the reticle. So if you just add a cursor and slash a cursor, um, that will give us a, a reticle and that is what we can use to select things. So you can see that, that ring there. So you can change the color of your reticle. So we can say color equals um, cyan, like a more shiny color. And we've got something that looks better now. It kind of looks like the loading indicator on Windows uh, Vista or something. But anyway, feel free to change it. Um, you can also learn more about the cursor in the documentation here. So if we go uh, scroll down, we'll find the A cursor um, element. And, and there aren't that many options really, but uh, you've got some more stuff in there, like the maximum distance, uh, uh, how far elements can be before they, uh, when they interact with the cursor. So if something is too far away, the cursor won't be able to interact with it. Um, and um, now that we have the cursor, we can uh, start using um, some events. So um, what I wanted to show you here in the documentation as well, if we go to events, um, that is um, somewhere in here. I think I'm going to have to uh, find it like so. Um, it's not that part. There is one part that has the events of the... Oh, no, no, sorry. It's my bad. It is in cursor. And then if you go to events here. So here we have different events that we can ha uh, have with our cursor. Um, so we can have, for example, when the cursor interacts with the entity or when the cursor no, uh, intersects with the entity or when no longer intersects with an entity and uh, the ones that are related to the mouse that is when you are pressing on an entity or when you stop pressing on an entity and a click is a click basically but the click will also work on for example the google cardboard or some other headsets that have a, like a clicker button or a single button that's like a trigger button um, that will be that can be used uh, for that event Let's now implement something interactive, something simple with our reticle. What we'll do is um, be able to make a box disappear when we click on it. We'll be using an animation for that. And then in the next lesson, we'll look at animations in, in a more depth and we'll cover more properties of animations. But for now, we'll just implement the very basic, the most basic animation that we can, that we can think of. So I'm going to start by creating a box, which I will make of um, color red. And I will give this box a certain position. Let's say, let's say two minus, minus four. 
and uh, one. So this will be a box that we can uh, we should be able to get in our scene. So let's go back to our our project here. And um, where is this box? I'm not seeing it anywhere. Let's see if I made some mistake here. So we've got the color red position. Um, oh, so this should be one and this should be minus four. I keep on getting those confused. Okay, so now we should see this box uh, right from the start. All right, so now we want to be able to click on the box and have the box disappear. So inside of the box component, we'll be adding an a-animation um, element. And this will allow us to change a certain property of the of the box. So the property will be changed. It needs to be specified under um, attribute. So the property is called visible. That is what you use to make things appear or disappear. So you can you can add a visible property. Uh, for example, if you add visible equals false to our sky, um, our sky should should no longer be there. So that is something that you can use for any element. So this could be a position, it could be scale, it could be color, but we're going to use visible. Um, so now then we need to specify we, um, what is going to be the end value at the end of the animation. So it is a property called two. The end value at the end of the animation is going to be false. And now we need to enter what event will make this animation start. So it's a property called begin. And the property here will be the, this will be the name of the event, which is click. So this should give us a very basic um, behavior, interactive behavior. So if I go and save that, I should now be able to click on the box and have the box um, change its visibility property to false. So let's try that. Let's go and refresh the page and bring our, our cursor there. And now if I click, my box is, uh, is disappeared. It's still there, but it's just invisible. So we can no longer click on it again. It's basically gone from the scene. All right, so um, we've got that basic thing working and um, you have learned in this lesson how to load a 360 photo, which on its, on its own, it's something that can be quite useful. Um, we have also learned that in order for us to have a, a cursor, we need to place that inside of the camera. And for that, we need to take control of our camera and create our own camera. Uh, look controls is what gives us this um, nice um, way of looking around with the mouse. And uh, since we created our camera, we now have to uh, basically take ownership of the position of the camera. We can create a reticle in this manner. And then if you want something to react to an event, um, you can simply create an animation, specify the attribute, and then you can set its value, what you will change it towards. And you can specify which event will trigger this animation. So that is all for this lesson. I will see you in the next video.